so what do we got here? Fallout 2 is a goddamn masterpiece. 24 years since release, and it still has active players and inspiring modding community, of course. Occasionally, developers, publishers release source code of their games for whatever reason. Unfortunately, it's not the case for Fallout 2, although there is source code for it, I swear. According to Interplay, the source code for the older games no longer exists, which was testified in court. I need to make that video. Anyway, in order to fix many issues and improve Fallout 2, enthusiasts went two ways. Memory injections and remakes. It's kind of true. The S-Fall and numerous other projects user, uh, use memory process injection to replace original functions with their fixed modified counterparts. True. Uh, they did, they've done a great job digging the binary, almost certainly disassembling and or decompiling a lot of code. The project is about seven years old and they still improve it. That's true. They, they are regular improvements, though I'm not really so sure that some of the stuff that's happening recently are all improvements. It's kind of questionable, but they're, they had, they're working on something. They're working on integrating high definition audio and high resolution stuff. So it's, it's, yeah, they're definitely making improvements. In the other camp, the most prominent project is Faltergeist. Faltergeist? I've heard of this. Is this, is this what they use for um, F Online? Uh, Got to bookmark this. I am watching it apparently. I didn't realize I was. Uh, is Faltergeist, which is an attempt to rewrite an entire game from scratch. Yeah, I, I don't know. Is this what they use for F Online? I don't know. It's even, it is, it's, it, it's, is. It's even older than S Fall and is about nine years old. Man, this guy could go through and fix his typos. I cannot tell how far did they get. Oh, God. It, does, does this person speak native English? Can't tell how far they got, but their readme states that they were, their work, to be done on the on world map elevators NPCs combat AI some scripting and skills okay that doesn't sound like us like um F online at all this is not F online these are pretty big areas of gameplay it was on hold for uh, the last two years well of course nobody's been working on it Wikipedia listed as inactive uh, there are a couple of other attempts to remake Fallout 2 for the web JS foe and JavaScript and dark foe and TypeScript both are abandoned and archived oh interesting stuff interesting stuff um, okay. But is there a third way? During my previous experimental project, a complete port of Jagged Alliance 2, another outstanding game of 90s, uh, of the 90s, I think, with chords, with source code released under educational research license, written in C to TypeScript. I'm not sure what TypeScript is. Okay. I had to deal with some assembly while rewriting blitters. Surprising. Okay. These are small drawing functions which puts hundreds of sprites in larger frame buffer pixel by pixel. Hmm. They were written in assembly for speed. Oh, okay. My C to JS transformation scripts could not handle that, so I had to deal with them manually. Well, yeah, if you're going from C to JavaScript, JavaScript's going to screw you every time. Um, I, I think. I don't know. I actually don't have that experience. But JavaScript has never been, never looked that nice when I've messed with it. I didn't have previous experience with assembly, so it took some time, but eventually I figured things out. So if such C to JavaScript port was possible in semi-automatic mode with scripts and assembly to JavaScript was possible to do manually, shouldn't it be possible to recover entire source code from an ex executable? There's no answer for that. It, dep it depends. There's no single answer for that. It depends. After some initial research, I chose Fallout 2 for my new experimental reverse engineering project. First, I love the game. I've spent many hours playing it with different crazy character builds and story decisions, even though it was a while ago. Maintaining motivation is crucial to success in long-term personal projects, so at least there is a personal interest. Second, it was written in C, so I won't have to deal with C++ concepts. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to deal with a lot of um, preprocessor directives, but yeah. Uh, finally, it's file formats, many engine details, and game mechanics are already well documented both in wiki and in code. Well documented, eh, but there is a bunch of documentation out there, but some of it's definitely better than others. Occasionally you find something that's actually useful. Anyway, once I've opened IDA, um, which is a tool to reverse engineer stuff, I don't remember what the acronym stands for. Uh, once I've opened IDA, I had hundreds of questions, but even before analyzing was was started. What target processor do I have to choose? Target assembler? The hell are kernel options and why there are two sets of them? Forget it, just go with the defaults. Ida says there are about 3,600 functions. My hundreds of questions are immediately skyrocketed. Skyrocketed, what is your native language? Is it many? Where do I start? Is it even possible? 
spent a couple days with Ida playing with options, reanalyzing the binary to see differences, but eventually I decided to go with defaults. Okay, cool. Not exactly an educational class on Ida, but all right. As for the numbers, 3600 functions is not that big. Okay. First, this number includes library functions, which are already implemented by the compiler itself. You just have to guess which ones. You have to guess which ones. Ida marks many of them, but it's not omnipotent, and there are false positives. Second, there are hundreds of unused functions, which are probably part of a larger engine used by Black House Studios in several games, or maybe some obsolete functions from Fallout 1. At the end of the day, I've decided that it would be easier to think that there are about 3,000 functions. Jagged Alliance 2 is about 10,000 functions with 380,000 SLOCs, which I'm not sure which are. So 3,000 functions should be roughly three times less. 110,000 SLOCs. Okay. Uh, that looked as something manageable. Keep in mind that Fallout has built an interpreter for its own scripting language. The scripts were, ev the scripts were open source many years ago and are about 300,000 SLOCs. Which again, I'm not really sure what SLOCs are. The last question was really the hardest. Is it even possible? Every time this question appears on Stack Overflow, Reddit, or Game Dev Forum, there is a guy showing up saying it's impossible. Or will take light years to do so. Or it will require a team of pros greedy for millions of dollars. Yeah. I found only a couple of projects of similar scope. The first one is Devolution, which is a reverse engineered Diablo 1. Interesting. Might be worth messing around with some of these. Hmm. It started with the discovery of debug symbols inside one of the game releases, which made the reverse engineering process a little bit easier. Naming thousands of variables and functions is a lot of pain. Uh, the second project is RE3 Reverse Engineered GTA 3. Okay. A fantastic example of large scale reverse engineering. Unfortunately, it was shut down due to copyright infringement claims from Take Two. Of course, with these two in mind, I've had my possibility question answered. Okay. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce Fallout 2 Reference Edition. Almost. Completely reverse engineered Fallout 2. The devolution is awesome, by the way. Okay. Goals. The main goal of this project is to restore source code as close as possible to what was originally written, including bugs in the original code. I would like to keep them for historical reasons with appropriate documentation whenever possible. Uh, it's particularly exploits. I really would like to keep the exploits around, but the guys I'm working on Sfall keep removing the exploits, which is so frustratingly irritating. Anyway. The other goal is inspirational motivational to prove that reverse engineering of this scope can be done solo in a timely manner. I've started in November 2020, so it only took about 18 months. I tend to work in waves, taking months long breaks, so actual time spent is even less. Good to know. But you're not getting paid for it, so nobody's going to do it. <laughs> no, um, no. I, you, have you, has nobody seen this video? Goy Boy, have you not seen the video I made on this? Has nobody seen this video? I swear. It only has like a couple hundred views, so probably not. All right, so I made this video. This is one of the first videos I ever made. Uh, Fallout News, Tim Kane has secrets. It has 648 views. Woohoo. It was made in 2018. But a more interesting question, which has been a long-standing one in the Fallout 1 and 2 modding community, even Per Jorner, the writer of the most thorough game guides I have ever seen for any game, lamented about the necessity to decompile the game engine to understand some of the trickier bugs he was doing research on when he was writing his guide would like an answer to this question, too. Darmor1233 asked, Do we still have the source code, or is it lost to time like most, most source code for old games? You did see that, okay. Surprising response, I have all the source code. I tried recompiling it about three months ago. I did not keep a copy of direct sound as the part of the DirectX package. And there are things that don't connect anymore. Like uh, some of the uh, uh, sound calls take two parameters instead of one. And I'm like, what's that other parameter? I don't know. I would just like to point out though, we did not take the source code, any source code from Interplay when we left. We came upon it much later. Yeah, we don't, that was something we didn't have. What this? Maybe it was Ashton Vidal. I I don't know. I, I I don't know, man. It's it's entirely possible that it, that the, that Interplay itself lost the source code for Fallout and Fallout Two, but they did come across the source code much later, and they do have the source code 
if this is to be believed. And I'm pretty sure these guys are telling the truth. I'm pretty sure they're not lying about it. Good that the source code is still not lost. Pity we won't get it though. Yeah, that's that's true. We probably won't get it because if the source code still exists and Bethesda wants to do something about it, uh, then Bethesda's gonna be like, okay, give us the source code. We're gonna work on re-releasing Fallout 1 or 2 or whatever, something like that. On the other hand, they might be kind enough to make it open source, but I doubt very much Bethesda. Bethesda's not the kind of company, they're way too fucking greedy at Bethesda to give a shit about the players. Um, with the ex single exception that they will make something moddable. Later, like after the company was shut down. Yes, exactly. Yes, much later. It, that's exactly it. They left in 98, I believe it was, or no, 97, 90. They left, both of these guys left um, Interplay in like 97, 98. The company shut down around 2003, 2004, something like that. So about five years later, it was shut down already. And that's actually about the same. Uh, well, no, I think they, I think um, Troika lasted a little longer. But yeah. Now it's a Microsoft thingy now, huh? Yeah, it's true. Legally, conveniently later. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, you, you can hear Tim Kaine go, uh, yeah, when he says later. that. Yeah. Wait, that was something he, 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 he gives this nervous later. yeah right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's like, he's like, because he's just, he's just sitting there. He goes, oh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> But, but anyway, you know, the, the source code, I'm, if, if these guys are telling the truth, and I'm pretty sure they are, the source code does exist. They have it somewhere, and it's probably, it, it, it may or may not be going through a lawsuit or not. I'm, I doubt, I doubt it. I think they'd probably hand it over pretty quick, if they were asked, if they were asked recently. Um, but th then there is a question of whether or not um, Bethesda or Microsoft, but this would, at this time, it, I think it would be Bethesda still. We care at, at this point. Like, I don't. I don't think they would care really. But who knows? Uh, legal implications. There are ongoing debates on whether reverse engineering is legal or not. Big names usually use clean room technique for reverse engineering. Best uh, first team disassemble to compile a portion of the software, then write specifications for the second team. The second team uses this specification and writes totally new code, which produces the same results as the original. My goal is to restore original code, so this technique does not apply. Some believe there are exceptions under DMCA, which allows reverse engineering for documentation and interoperability purposes. I don't think it would be the DMCA. I think it's the fair use act, uh, part of it, but okay. I doubt it's that simple, but I've documented very many variables, functions, and edge cases discovered, discovered along the way. As for the RE3 takedown, I think they were simply unlucky because Take-2 decided to make a remaster of their game. When Blizzard did Diablo 2 remaster, no actions were taken against Devolution. Since the source code of Fallout 2 is believed to be lost, it's unlikely it will ever be remastered simply because there is nothing to remaster. It has to be new development, using technologies which were almost which are almost three decades old. Um, actually, I think the technologies are like 50 years old, 60 years old, something like that. It's C, dude. It's C. It's C. <laughs> I think it's way older than that, but okay. Anyway, I'm not a lawyer, so let's hope Bethesda, Microsoft, or whoever owns IP to Fallout won't do anything to make me need one. Um, again, the source code, I'm pretty sure, does exist, but neither here nor there with that one. Final thoughts. I've made many mistakes during reverse engineering. Now, this project contains two types of bugs, the ones in the original implementation, which is okay, and bugs I've made on top of that. Not okay. Some of the core functionality might be broken in an un unexpected way, to be clear, I haven't completed full walkthrough. I'm not even sure if that's possible at this time. Yeah, you're looking at a couple more years of work, of actual work. Style-wise, there are hundreds of unnamed variables and functions. Sound fillers, decoders, movie decoders is a complete disaster, but works? I thought you said it was a disaster. All right. The game is so vast, there are too many game situations, conditions that cannot be easily spotted. Others require luck random stuff, RNG, or somehow based on character builds or specific gameplay decisions. I urge all Fallout fans to try it out and report anything unusual in GitHub so I can double check with original implementation. That's all, folks. Thanks for reading. All right, that's cool. Yeah, I am totally going to make a video about this and say, okay, guys, to finish this video up, if you guys want to try out Mr. Alexander Batalov's single, he only has one post. Okay, cool. This, if you want to try this out, I will actually drop this link in the, in the thing, so you guys can click on it. If you want to try this out, go ahead and check out his, um, follow to rework, remaster, whatever this is, and contribute to his repository. Should be interesting. 